behavior, normal stress and shear stress. For this case, I would like to highlight what is normal stress. Normal stress, you can see the stress is acting normal to the surface area. All right, this is surface area. While the shear stress, we call as the tau symbol, which is lateral or uh, we call in the same direction, okay, with the with the plane or the surface. This is the shear stress. This is the normal stress. And then we learn about the microscopic behavior of fluid, as you can see in the picture. Even though the water molecule, for example, you look at as stationary water. But inside the molecule, it is actually happen. All right, the molecule is collide, vibrate, move to each other within the container. All right, and uh, this is the definition of density, which is mass over a volume. All right, I hope that you understand the basics of engineering. All right, this is just a basic. Basic of physics. Okay, uh, someone asked uh, asked me about the the equation here. Okay, so what's the, your question again? Uh, my uh, question is, uh, can kita dah tahu the the value of uh, mean free path, and then the okay. question is the state if the length. Uh, is great the value of the length is greater than the value of the mean free path maksudnya the continuum model is acceptable maksudnya um, kenapa kita kena tahu continuum model tu acceptable for apa? okay okay uh, what's your name can you introduce uh, oh, Shafiq. Shafiq so I should call you Shafiq ah Shafiq okay Shafiq asked us ask me about uh, how this model uh, can be accepted to be a uh, continuum model is it refer ah, to yes, the yes okay refer to the length kenapa dia compare okay first you must understand the fluid that we going to do the analysis is the continuum process okay okay let me open the pen wait for a while <coughs> okay this is the good question Okay. Okay. Someone uh, previously uh, give me uh, give uh, give us uh, give me the answer. The what is the continuum? All right. Some give give us uh, the continuity, the continuous. All right. This is the uh, this is the question. Okay, for example, this is the box or container, right? And when the L, L is the characteristic length. Okay, what do you know about characteristic length? Anyone? Dia punya object yang dalam, dia ada fluid. Okay, anyone would like to... Uh, give another answer. What is the characteristic length? The diameter of the molecule. Uh, Najimun? Uh, diameter of the molecule. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. Why it called characteristic length? Okay, first I want you to understand. What is the molecule of water? H? 2? O? Right. Yes, sir. What is what is the molecule of nitrogen? N2. 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 Yeah. Oxygen? O2. O2. Carbon dioxide? Uh, CO2. CO2. Okay. CO2. For example, oxygen. This is oxygen. Okay. And, and the bond is hydrogen, right? Yes. Okay. Nitrogen? Nitrogen and nitrogen. 
I don't know lah double bond or triple bond. Okay, just consider this is the bond. Okay, oxygen. Okay, I, I'm not sure what is this. Okay, and then uh, CO2, carbon. Okay, can you see this molecule have different configuration, right? Sometimes have uh, yes. different bond. This is a uh, this is three molecule, three atom, this is two atom. How they different, how they represent or simplify the length? Okay, so that means they simplify the length here as here, the maximum length. Okay. So Maksudnya from length here, atom eh, doctor. Yes. This one, basically the maximum length we call as the representative or we call as the characteristic length. So for this one, this is the L. L. Okay, everyone understand so far? What is L? Yes. Yes. Okay, L is the, actually the maximum length, all right? Some atom or molecule have different number of atom, different configuration, sometimes this one, Okay, we'll change the shape. For example, this one. Okay, this one, yeah. Will be like this. Uh, can you see? Is the L different? Yes, doctor. Yeah. Yes. That is why, actually, this one, look at the, uh, the maximum length for uh for all the molecule for example this molecule one i think this is million of molecule so they look at the maximum length to be represent as the characteristic length so that's why they introduce the characteristic length okay so far everyone understand yeah, what is l yes sir. okay in this case uh in the container we won't draw in this kind of shape. We draw like this. Okay, understand. We represent, we represent the diameter here as here. The diameter as the L. Okay, because we simplify this one to be like this. Okay, everyone, everyone can understand that. The, the difference. We represent this one as this one inside here. Yes, so as at yes, as, 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 as the molecule, as the a molecule. one molecule. Oh, yeah. okay. Can you please uh, um, uh, ulang balik itu? <laughs> okay, which part that you not clear? Okay. Ya, yeah, yang baru doktor buat tadi. Kita tak faham doktor simbolisikan dalam tu jadi sebagai satu bola je. Yang tu kan uh -huh. ada tiga biji, nak buat satu. Uh -huh. Okay. So, okay for this case, we know that height uh, H2O water. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, H2O Supposedly oxygen, this is hydrogen, right? Okay, so when we consider as the continuum process Okay, we consider as the uh, as, the, as the imaginary uh, molecule So for this case Okay, so we consider here as the a molecule inside here. O, hydrogen, hydrogen. So in this case, we make it very big. Uh, big, uh, a few number, for example. Okay, so from here, uh, we know that the characteristic length, okay, which is from here to here, right? Everyone? Yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Yes, okay, Dr. this is the characteristic length. Okay, 
if the characteristic length compared to the mean free path, which is lambda, okay, lambda is the average distance because we have so many molecules. We need to average them together. Average distance a molecule travel before it collide. Right? For example, this one, gonna collide with this one. So the average distance here, so you have to plus, plus, plus and divide to make it average. For example, this is the average lambda. Okay, from here, you can see if the L is, this is very small. The lambda, this is not considered as continuum. Okay, otherwise, we look at different things. Okay, this is the case when this is continuum. For example, I try to uh, draw, complete, uh, occupy this tank, this box, all right? So what is the L? L is here, right? And the lambda is here. Okay, or I call like this, sorry. Okay, to make it you, uh, better understand, okay, for example, like this. Okay, so what is the L here? The L is here, right? This is L. So the lambda is here. For example, this is lambda. So for, for this case, the L is far more, is a bigger than lambda. So this case we call as the continuum process because the particles are closely packed together. Can you understand this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, for this case, can you see the particle is not packed together? This is not considered as the continuum process, continuum of the gas on the liquid because the particles are far, far away. That is why we compare with the L versus lambda. Okay? Are you clear about this? Oh, from doctor, maksudnya kalau yes, dia punya average tu lagi besar, maksudnya dia dah tak jadi fluid lah. Dia Ah, dia akan jadi yang, it will be separate, separate apa, entity. Understand tak? Macam mana, macam mana? Okay, if for this case, this is considered as not continuum. Okay, not continuum. This is continuum. So that means this going to be considered as a separate entity. It is far, far away. Okay, because, okay, for example, this is the universe. Okay. Okay, for example, like this. Okay, do you think this is the continuum? No. No. no, no, no. Yes. Huh? This is continuum or not continuum? No. Not continuum. No. Not continuum. Uh, not. This is no, no. no continuum because the lambda is bigger than the characteristic length. So when we do analysis, for example, when we do analysis uh, inside, uh, this is like a water. Okay, and then we need to study the, uh, study the pressure at different uh, elevation. So we cannot do this analysis in, free, uh, in the fluid mechanic because this water <laughs> How to explain, yeah? Okay, this is water molecule. It is separate from the continuum process. In other words, we can say that fluid mechanic, fluid mechanics always, always uh, deal, okay, with 
continuum of gases and liquid. If the process or if the matter is not continuum, that means the analysis throughout all the fluid mechanic is not valid. Okay? For if everyone, can you understand what is the importance of continuum? Uh, by looking at the molecule, we will know that this is continu uh, continuum or not. Yes. So for your, for your understanding, you need to understand that when you look at the, the matter, uh -huh. it is considered as uh, continuum or not continuum. So how to, how to differentiate? You need to know the characteristic length as well as the lambda, mean free path. Uh, okay. okay, and then this is a very important point. For the fluid mechanic, always deal with continuum gases or liquid. Okay. 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 For example, if the case or if the model is continuum, okay, then you can use this equation lah to find the uh, to find the diameter, the diameter of the uh, molecule. All right. Okay, this is the pressure. I believe you understand. The pressure is the force over area, absolute pressure, and the gauge pressure. So, what do you know about the absolute pressure and the gauge pressure? Everyone? Absolute pressure is a pressure that will not be negative. Always less on positive value. Okay. How about the gauge pressure? Local pressure. Local atmospheric pressure. Okay. Anyone would like to give uh, a view on what is the what is the difference? Absolute or uh, what is the difference? Absolute pressure and the gauge pressure. Even though the definition is given here, I want to understand your point. Do you understand what is absolute pressure? Okay. To make it simple, it should be like this. Okay. This is line. All right. This line we call as the absolute zero. Absolute zero. The definitions of absolute zero means the particle will not move at all, will not rotate, vibrate, or collide to each other. Means the particle uh, fix, not move at all. Okay, now you understand it, absolute zero. The particle won't move. Even though we know that uh, at the room temperature, the particle will move. But because of the condition absolute zero, the particle will be fixed, will not move at all. Okay, now you have to imagine. When considered absolute zero, the particle fixed, not move at all. It is like die. Okay, so from here, when we increase the temperature or increase uh, whatever property, the pressure, for example, like this the pressure will increase okay the pressure above the absolute zero we call we call as the okay hurry okay for example <coughs> okay i want to ask you uh <coughs> what is the atmospheric pressure before we uh, start explaining this what is the atmospheric pressure? 101.35 kilopascal. Okay. 101.3 kilopascal. Atmospheric pressure is basically 
atmospheric pressure is basically by the value 101.325 kilopascal. Okay, this is the absolute pressure. Uh, sorry, this is the atmospheric pressure. Uh, we are surrounded by atmospheric, right? By the nature, by the air. We are there. <coughs> so, we can say that our current condition now is surrounded by the atmospheric pressure. Okay? The atmospheric pressure coming from the molecule. Okay? In the air. For example, this is the Okay, for example, this is the ground and this is you. Okay, you are surrounded by atmospheric pressure. What is the atmospheric pressure? It is not only the value here. This is the molecule, <coughs> molecule of air. We know that inside the air, we have the oxygen. We have the carbon dioxide. We have the nitrogen. Right, everyone? Yeah, that's it. Okay, yes, all, all this molecule, all, all this molecule inside the air will give or will exert the pressure to you. Okay, will exert the pressure to you. So what this pressure we call? Atmospheric. Yes, that is what we call atmospheric pressure. Understand? Yes, doctor. Maksudnya yes. apa-apa yang pressure kalau kat atas tanah pun still atmospheric juga kan? Yang yes, okay. yes. Uh, uh, above the ground or under the reference of the sea level, we will exert the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure coming from this particle, from the air particle, um, <coughs> oxygen, nitrogen, carbon will exert the certain amount of pressure. So the pressure that they exert is actually this value, 101.325. Okay, what happened when you at the top of the hill? Okay, this is you. What do you think of the atmospheric pressure at the hill? Kurang. Okay, why it is reduced? Because the pressure between the molecules is reduced, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, it's okay. Anyone, anyone? Why the atmospheric pressure at the top of the hill, uh, we call, uh, we call uh, reduce or decrease compared to the, on the sea level. This is sea level. Lower number of particles creating pressure. Okay, by theoretically, we can say that the number of particles here is less compared to the sea level. Why? It's about gases. But the, it, this also gases. This also gases. Why the number of particles, okay, this particle, the number of particles um, on top of the hill, for example, I just say it is a uh, uh, fifty number of particle to make it uh, to make it uh, clear for you. This is at the at the sea level, uh, thousand number of particle. Oh. Why happen when okay. this number of particle fifty? Do you think the atmospheric pressure uh, the same with the sea level? No. No. Okay, this is the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure, mm -hmm. the particle the here will give, will exert the atmos will exert the pressure to your body. Okay. But it is it is less compared to the sea level. Why? Because of number of particle, right? So why the number of particle at the top of the hill uh, less compared to the sea level? Due to gravity. Yes, perfect. Betul, betul. Due to the gravity. Okay, let me explain clearly. This is the earth. Okay, this is the gra uh, this is the sea level. And then this is the 
uh, this is the ground. Uh, sorry, this is the hill. Okay. So the gravity, the gra uh, the uh, gravity attraction, which one is higher at the top or at the at the sea level? The top. The, the top. Sea level. Sea level. Sea level. Sea level. Sea level. The gravity. The gravity. Oh, sea level lah. Makin dekat dengan kau, makin tinggi. Uh -huh. So, basically, uh, okay, one thing is due to the gravity and secondly, okay, due to the gravity, all these particle, okay, Let's say this is all the particle attracted toward the center of gravity, right? Yeah. So what do you think of the, uh, the, the, the dance of the particle? Of course, the, the particle will dance at the sea level. So we can say that at the sea level, Due to the uh, gravity gravity attraction, the particle will attracted to the to the sea level, and it will occupy first at the surface of the sea level. Okay, so for this one, before it occupy the the hill, the particle has to occupy at the sea level first. So you guys understand, due to the gravity, the particle will occupy first the, the sea level. That is why the particle will compact, will dance at the sea level. So there are so many particle at the sea level. Compared to the hill, the particle uh, less because all this particle uh, has to be uh, at the at the sea level because of the attraction due to the gravity. So that is why this particle okay will attract to the sea level because of the gravity. That is why the sea level atmospheric pressure is quite high, uh, quite uh, larger compared to the uh, hill level. Okay, so back to our basic definitions of absolute pressure and the gauge pressure. Okay, for example, this is the uh, line I call as the absolute zero. That means all the particle not move at all, fixed. Okay, so the atmospheric pressure should be more than the absolute zero. Okay, due to the atmospheric pressure, the particle have the pressure. Okay, let's say this is the P atmospheric pressure. Okay, and then the P gauge or the gauge pressure is the pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure. Relative mean we compare the atmospheric pressure level. Okay, this is the level of uh, P atmospheric pressure. For the P gauge, we compare from here. Okay, so for example, this is P gauge. Alright, so the total, the total between P atmospheric pressure and the P gauge, we call as the absolute pressure from here to here okay so far everyone understands what is the absolute atmospheric and the gauge yes doctor okay so this is actually why we call as the absolute why we call as the absolute? Uh, it's called real pressure. Because we compare with the absolute. Can you see this? Uh, the word absolute? Yes, absolute doctor. zero. Oh, the reference the absolute zero line. Yes, perfect. 
because of the reference is absolute zero that is why we name as p absolute because the reference from the absolute zero that is why from here to here we call as p absolute okay uh -huh. okay for the p gauge it is relative to atmospheric pressure can you see relative to atmospheric pressure so we compare to atmospheric pressure with atmospheric pressure this yeah. one right yes so oh. uh, the, so the p gauge compare to which one compare to p at patm or compare to abs patm yes that PATM. is why that yes perfect that is why p gauge has to be start from here oh baru paham because we compare to patm can you see the definition here the yeah. relative pressure to the atmospheric pressure because we compare to patm so that is why we start from here okay okay doctor okay everyone clear about this what is the p absolute <laughs> patm and pH? yes doctor yes doctor okay so when someone asks you what is p absolute p absolute is the pressure we compare or reference to the absolute zero understand Yes. So when P uh, gauge pressure is the pressure we compare to the atmospheric pressure. Okay. So you can see here the definitions. Okay. So we go to the temperature. Okay. Uh, previously I talked about the absolute zero. Right. Yes, doctor. Okay. What is the absolute zero? Uh, again. <laughs> Absolute zero is a pressure compare. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Uh, absolute absolute zero. Uh, when all the energy is sucked out of the molecules and it uh, it, uh, it stays in a position, it doesn't move. That's yeah. Oh. Yes. No right. colliding. No collide at all. For example. This is container. Inside the container, we have the air. Okay, inside the air, we have the uh, we have the molecule, right? What do you think of this molecule will act? Do you think it, it will rotate? It will it will vibrate? Okay. And it will collide, right? Yes. Because this molecule possess energy. Okay because of the molecule possess a certain amount of energy that is why each particle can move rotate collide because of the energy when we remove the energy what do you think of the what do you think of the particle static static it is just like die the particle die will not move static okay that is what we call as the absolute zero the particle uh, don't have any more, don't have any kinds of energy uh, fixed, not move at all. So this is the point. Okay, the scientists discover that when they try to cool down this uh, molecule, uh, this uh, fluid, for example, freeze this container until negative, Two seven three one five. What do you think when the a container freezes? The energy loss or gain? Oh, loss. The energy will loss. Okay, the energy will loss throughout the container, right? So the energy will loss until completely lost zero no energy at all when the temperature reach negative 273.15 degree celsius okay everyone yes doctor okay yes, so doctor. In, there is the relation between the temperature and the pressure okay Okay, let me explain to you the Celsius. 
Okay, the Kelvin we call as the uh, SI unit, all right? The Celsius is not SI unit, all right? What do you think? What is the difference between Celsius and Kelvin? What is the difference? What can you differentiate? Uh, can you tell the meaning? What do you know? Uh, the Kelvin, Celsius, what? Kelvin, the Kelvin is a unit and Celsius is a derived SI unit. It's derived from SI unit. Okay. What's the what's the unit for Celsius? Unit. Celsius, I think uh, Celsius. Degree. 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 Okay. degree Celsius. Degree Celsius. Okay, the Kelvin also. Okay, this is not about the derived uh, quantity, no. Okay, let me explain, yeah. Uh, doctor, uh, Celsius okay. is in reference to water's uh, temperature and uh, Kelvin is in reference to absolute zero. Okay, perfect, correct. Okay, basically like this. C degree. Okay. Ordinary means it is ordinary temperature we use as the Celsius. Okay. The absolute mean Kelvin. Okay, why? Because... Uh, Kelvin is actually refer to the absolute zero. Can you see here? This is absolute zero, right? Yes. Okay. okay. So when whenever you give the value in terms of Kelvin, okay, when you give the value in terms of Kelvin, that means the temperature that you measure is compared to the absolute zero. It is uh, exactly the same like the pressure before. The absolute pressure and the gauge pressure. Can you see the relation? The Kelvin is actually the temperature that you measure, you compare to the absolute zero. Okay? Okay. So, for the Celsius, for example, like you measure your body temperature, 36.5. Celsius, right? So the Celsius that you measure is ordinary temperature, not compared at, at any kind of reference. When you give the value in terms of Kelvin, that means you measure your body temperature compared to the absolute zero. Uh -huh. Okay, now you understand what is Kelvin and what is Celsius. The Celsius just measure the ordinary one without compare anything just the value i give you the value 35.6 celsius that's it when you give the value in terms of kelvin that mean okay for example what is your normal body temperature 37 30, 36 37 37 36 okay. uh, 37 what's the, what's the value Kelvin or Celsius? Celsius. Celsius degree. Celsius. 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 Okay, can you give me uh, the meaning of this? What do you what do you think of this? Body temperature. Uh, okay, the body, body temperature. temperature. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Only, only I did, I give didn't you know only for body temperature. Okay, only body temperature, right? Okay. Yes. So, body temperature. Only body temperature. You are not compared with anything else. Okay, this value only body temperature. However, when you give the value, when you try to convert Celsius into Kelvin, can you convert? That means uh, when you convert to Kelvin, the value 37 plus 273.15. What's the value? 290. 310.15. 0.15 Okay 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 This is the unit of Kelvin Salah apa? 
310 310 310 okay 310 okay 310 okay so 310 kelvin okay can you tell me what is 310 kelvin temperature of body tapi based on absolute zero so, okay. temperature okay. body method from the body, absolute zero temperature body temperature and kelvin <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Uh, eh, what? Okay. So, okay. Basically, uh, this is your body temperature. Everyone, are you there? Yes. 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 Yes, okay. okay, this is your body temperature. Okay, where's your, okay. This is your body temperature. For example, this one, uh, 37. Okay. And this is at the specific uh, pressure lah. All right. So this body temperature, you reference, uh, you compare to the absolute absolute zero. zero that means okay zero kelvin until 310 kelvin okay this is your body temperature right okay everyone are you can you see yes please. yes Okay, what happened uh, yeah, when yeah, what happened when this value you drop this value three one zero Kelvin drop until zero Kelvin? Um, it's negative two hundred seventy three degrees Celsius. <laughs> okay, so that means the molecule inside your body is not move at all so we call as the uh, absolute zero okay so now you compare for example this is your body this is just imagine lah. okay this is the body when the molecule is not move at all okay and compare to your body the molecule move with the temperature 310 Kelvin. So that is why this value 310 uh, uh, Kelvin is compared to the absolute zero. Okay, so you must have the comparison. For example, uh, you get the result for your examination. Do you think what, what's your expectation? You, must, you might compare right your result with someone. Remember? Yeah, okay. okay, what what normally you compare? You compare with your previous result or you compare with the your friend result result? With, with Ama. <laughs> okay. Okay, why you compare with Ama? Because Ama is genius. Okay. Thank you, mate. Okay, anyone? Anyone uh okay, this is the nature. This is the human nature. Whenever we get value we must compare with the reference whether it is good or it is not right so same goes to the physics same goes to the free mechanic when we get the value of temperature we must have the point reference to compare with the absolute zero that means the molecule will not move at all okay same goes to the pressure remember the pressure i explained to you previously when um. we get when we have the when we have the uh, gauge pressure, we compare with the atmospheric pressure. 
Okay. Sorry for interrupting, Doctor. Yeah, uh, can we can we use Kelvin in our life? I mean, tomorrow you come to me and say, "What's my uh, body temperature?" And then I will tell you three hundred ten Kelvin. Is it okay? Okay. Will that make sense? That is uh, for for uh, that case, it makes sense for your calculation. Your calculation, it is must using Kelvin. When you go outside, you should use the ordinary. Can you see this one? Uh -huh. uh, so you should use the ordinary one because not people know about the, the science, the, about the engineering. So you have to know, okay, when you have the value of uh, Celsius, please convert into Kelvin because throughout the, uh, we're going to use the SI unit. SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. Okay. So remember uh, again, what is Kelvin? Kelvin is a temperature. Okay. That refer to the absolute zero. Yes. Perfect. Correct. When you talk about Kelvin, it is the temperature you refer to the absolute zero. That means the the particle die will not move at all you compare to that zero absolute okay that is the kelvin doctor doctor so maksudnya sebenarnya kan tujuan kita tukar to kelvin is sebab contohlah kan kita kan nak cari the pressure of absolute kan mm -hmm. so uh, pressure of absolute tu is refer to the absolute uh, zero so maksudnya semua uh, value dalam dalam calculation untuk uh, cari uh, pressure absolute kita kena tukarkan value yang refer to absolute zero betul tak Yes, yeah, correct. Dari segi pressure atau temperature atau ah, itulah dua itulah untuk yes. dapatkan the absolute. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. If ha we have the the pressure, oh, we so need to convert it. into absolute because we compare to the absolute zero. If we have the temperature, we need to convert into Kelvin because we compare to absolute. Yes. Because the absolute is our point of reference. Okay, now you understand, yeah? The pressure and temperature quite the same lah, relationship there. We compare to the absolute, okay? If you want to know more, if you, uh, if you want to know more about the absolute, please study uh, on your own self because it will be interesting because you know already the absolute temperature, the absolute, uh, a pressure and then once you study more and then you will understand more okay okay can you see this one this is the steam point 100 degrees celsius this is the ordinary temperature this is the kelvin this value 373 is compare when you look at kelvin please remember this value of temperature compare to the absolute zero okay clear yes doctor all right, now we go to the, uh, I think, uh, we take a break dulu lah. <laughs> One hour already. We take a break, uh, 10 minutes, okay? Okay, doctor. Okay, doctor. Okay, doctor. Okay, doctor. Thank you. Uh, doctor, is it one hour or two hours today? Amma two hour, amma two hour. Masak langgau ni. Huh? Two hour. Uh, and tomorrow? Tomorrow also two hours. Two? Tomorrow? Two. Don't have a time yeah. table. Yesterday tomorrow. only one hour. Uh -huh, okay. We have class tomorrow. Yeah, we have class tomorrow at um at eleven. At eleven, yeah.
Thank you, Nitin. My what? Okay, everyone, are you there? Yes, Doctor. Okay, Doctor. Yes, Doctor, yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes, okay. Doktor, we can't hear you. Ah, doktor, kita tak dengar. Doktor, doktor tak dengar. Hello everyone, can you listen? Yes, Dr. Yes, yes Dr. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, specific week is actually gamma. Specific week, the symbol is gamma. Uh, anyone, can you uh, mute your uh, sound? Because I can hear my echo. Okay, thank you. So, specific weight, the symbol is gamma. The definition, weight per unit volume, which is weight per unit volume. So, what is weight? Weight is mass multiplied with gravity over volume. We know that mass divided with volume is density. That is why we replace mass and volume with density gravity. Okay, so specific weight is actually rho g. Everyone? Yes, Dr. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this one, specific gravity on the other hand is the ratio of density substance to the density of water. Okay, so the symbol normally SG. The density of the substance, whatever, the density of the oil, the water, the density of whatever fluid, divide with the density of water. So what is the density of water? One water. Uh, what? 1.00 that is the density 1, of air the okay. density of density of air 1.2 this is density of air what is the density of water normally you drink no no it's different 1000 Yes, 1, the, density, the density of water, standard, 1,000, please remember. Normally not given in the exam, but you must know. This is the general knowledge. Okay, so the density of substance divide with the density of water. Okay, however, we can say that the density of the substance for example, this is the density of water. I want to add gravity. 
Is it okay if I put gravity and gravity at denominator and nominator? Do you think okay? No, because it will cancel out each other. Yes, perfect, correct. Gravity is standard, constant, 9.81. When we put gravity and gravity cancel to each other, no meaning. However, rho g, rho g uh, refer to rho g. Specific weight. Specific weight. That is why we can replace specific weight of substance over specific weight of water. Can you see here? Specific of substance over specific of water. So in other way, we can say SG, specific gravity is density of substance over density of water or specific way of substance over specific way of water okay very simple okay what do you know about not uh, next we move to the viscosity what do you know about viscosity can you give example of viscosity that affect your daily life viscosity okay i would like to give my example for example I try to, uh, I I try to add the uh, ketchup or the sauce, okay, and then I try to make a different kind of uh, motion so that the ketchup or the sauce can uh, go to my uh, plates, okay. So that is the viscosity. So can you give example? What is the viscosity that affect your daily life? Okay, everyone. Yeah. Are you? Yes, yes. What, is, uh, what do you think of viscosity? Okay, perfect. When we use honey. Okay, honey cleaning my face with water. Okay, that is the viscosity. Okay, so when you look at the application, you must know what is the definition of viscosity. Viscosity means the major resistance to the fluid motion. Okay, so in other words, we can say that the viscosity is the resistance to the fluid motion. Okay, when you have the higher viscosity, that means you have higher resistance of the motion. Okay, do you think the water have higher viscosity or not compared to the oil? No. No. Okay. no. The water can move freely. Okay, the water can move. The water can move freely. That is why the water has a lower viscosity compared to the oil, compared to the honey. Okay, so I would like to show you the picture clearly. What is the viscosity for your understanding? Okay, this is better. Okay, this is the plate. Okay, this is the fixed plate. And then the plate at the bottom of the, uh, the water. Okay, this is the water. Okay. This is the water. This is the fixed plate. The plate won't move. Okay. And then we have another plate. Okay, however, this plate move. Okay, when we apply the shear, the shear stress. Okay, so what happened when we move the plate? What do you think? What's going to happen when we move the plate? Bottom plate jatuh. Uh, let's say this plate is floating lah, floating. What happened? Can you do that? Okay, this plate are floating and then we try to push the plate in this direction. What happened to this plate? Moving. Okay, definitely move uh, to the right. The plate will feel mm. a resistance. Okay. This plate is going to move to the right, right? 
So, when this plate moves to the right, okay, water, will the move, water will move to the left. Okay, no, no. Uh, this water will follow. Okay, let's say this is water. This is water molecule will follow. Because dragging. Okay, the water molecule uh, below this molecule will follow as well. And below this one will follow this one. Okay, can you see? However, the water molecule uh, close to the fixed uh, plate will not move, okay, because of the drag, okay. So can you see here, when I try to draw a line, okay, I try to make it clear. Okay, when I try to draw the line, this line we call the velocity profile. The profile, later on you're gonna learn. Okay. Can you see this line is a straight line, the linear line? Right. Yes, I can. Okay, this is the straight line. When we apply more uh, shear stress, what do you think of the uh, the velocity? It will increase. It will increase. Okay, the, velo the velocity will increase. Okay, yes. so look look at here. Okay, this is referred to, okay, uh, the elevation, the height from the bottom of the plate, okay, towards the top of the plate, we call as the Y. Okay, and then the particle move from here to here, we call as the U, the velocity. Okay, clear about this. Yes, sir. Okay, so this is U, this is Y. Okay, what do you think of the Y? Okay, for example, uh, this is Y, Y, okay, Y, Y prime. Okay. Okay, at Y prime, what do you think of the velocity? Is it uh, higher or lower? Decrease or uh, increase? Uh, same. Okay, okay. When you compare to this one, okay, for example, this is Y. At this elevation, uh, what will be the velocity, the U? Uh, bigger than, Y prime is bigger than Y? Yes, correct. Okay, can you see this one? The uh, more yes, the, the more the value of y, the velocity will increase. Okay. So because of this, okay, because of this, they try to form the relationship from whole this picture into this picture. Okay. So tau basically a uh, force over area. Okay, now convert into mu du over dy. Okay, so tau here is shear stress. This one. And u here is the change of u. Can you see here? We have u. And we have y. Okay, so what is the, what is this? Friction. What is this? Friction. Okay, this, this is not friction. This is, this is we call absolute viscosity. That is why we call here. Oh, yeah. Can you, can you see the, the symbol say? Yes. This we call viscosity. Okay, actually viscosity is the coefficient of uh, what we call it, eh? 
Let's see. Um, wait, let me check. Wait for a while, yeah. Okay. Basically, uh, this is we call the absolute uh, viscosity. Okay, viscosity is actually uh, the coefficients of uh, linearity. Okay, for example, this is the coefficient. Can you see this line, everyone? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay, this line will have. Do you think? Okay, this is water, lah. For example, water. What do you think of oil? Is it the same uh, nature? No. Maybe like this. Okay. So, this is maybe oil. Okay. So, can you see? This actually refer to absolute viscosity. It gives you the different profile. Okay, can you see here? This is in, uh, interesting. For Newtonian fit, a fit which the shear stress directly proportional to the velocity gradient. Okay. Remember that uh, previously I give the some amounts of stress, shear stress, tau. Okay, and then uh, the the strain rate. Okay, remember that this one. Can you see this one? The straight line? Yes. Okay, actually this uh, actually refer to this one. Can you can you see can you see clearly? Yes. Yes, doctor. Okay, I try to draw. Okay, I try to use this one. Newtonian liquid. Okay. Okay, this is actually the Okay. Okay, can you see the the uh, the increment is uh, increased linearly. That is why we call it as a Newtonian fit. When we give a uh, stress certain amount of stress, the value of uh, strain rate will increase as well, proportional to the stress. That is what we call Newtonian fit. Newtonian fit can be air, can be water and oil. Okay. So for this case, this is not considered as non-Newtonian uh, fit. The fluid that we don't consider as a Newtonian, we call as a non-Newtonian. Why non-Newtonian? Because it is not straight line. Okay. When we apply a shear stress, the motion of the fluid is not straight line. The velocity profile is not straight line. That is what we call a non-Newtonian. Okay. Newtonian is the straight line. Can you see here? The one that I uh explain to you previously the velocity profile that is the that is the straight line when it is the straight line we consider as the newtonian fluid okay this is just example lah. the dilator and all kind of non-newtonian okay this is the compressibility Okay, basically the compressibility is the describe the bulk modulus of elasticity. Mm. It is actually the ratio, the change of pressure to the change of the density. Can you see the symbol of compressibility? Okay, this is a important part. The fluid we can do the we can compress. 
Okay, the compressibility of the fluid we can uh, define as the compressibility. Okay, the symbol is C. So this is the formula lah. Okay, in order to get the compressibility, okay, this value, the change of pressure over the change of density. Okay, this is the uh, fluid property for the compressibility. Okay, surface tension. Okay, what do you know about surface tension? Everyone? Bila ada force dekat atas surface tu, dia ada... Yeah, the force, uh, the surface force against the... Uh, uh, must be the liquid since we are talking about fluid. We, we can't hear you, doctor. Hello? Hello? No, can't hear you. Amira, you can hear him? Yeah. Really? No, no, he, she, she, she can, not can. Ah, oh, she can. Hello? Wait, yeah? Hmm. Okay, Doctor. Okay, okay, okay. Boleh? Hello, everyone? Ah, tapi suara saya dah double lah. Ya, kan, kan. Boleh, boleh. Okay. I use the uh, laptop uh, microphone, sir. Everyone? Okay. Boleh dengar? Syafiq? Boleh, Doctor. Boleh, doctor. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the second last part, the surface tension. Basically, the surface tension is kind of the fluid property. Okay, it is the cohesive force, whatever kind of force. For example, in uh, between the molecule to molecule, we have a uh, different kind of force, like the hydrogen bond, uh, Van der Waal forces. Remember? Do you remember? Uh, the forces between molecule, different kind of forces. Uh, ionic bond, you remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so all these uh, forces we call as the cohesive force, okay? The cohesive force between liquid molecule are responsible for the phenomenon known as the surface tension, okay? For example, this is a water molecule. H2O, 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 and on top of the water, we have the surface. Okay, this is the air. Right, we, got, we, we expose to the air. Okay, we have the air surface. And here we have water, water, water. All right, inside the water molecule, definitely we have the uh, cohesive force or attraction, the bonding attraction between molecule to molecule. All right. So, for this case, because of the attraction between molecule to molecule, this will form the surface tension, okay? Okay. For example, what, what do you think? Okay, okay this is the uh, water strider managed to float uh, on the water. Because of why? Because of surface tension. With the surface tension, the water slider managed to move uh, freely on top of the water. Because of why? Okay, this is the reason. Okay, let me draw. Okay. 
Okay, this is the particle. Okay, this is the droplet, droplet of water. Okay, this is H2O. Okay, in the droplet of water, we have the surface area. Okay, surface area cover the droplet of water. This surface area, okay, being pulled by the H2O. Because of the cohesive force. That is why you can see why the droplet becomes spherical. Are you, uh, do, do you can see the droplet become like this? The droplet of water or the droplet of water become like this? Anyone? No. Okay, why, why the droplet of water be, be a, spher a spherical in nature? Why not become too big? Or pyramid? towards the center yes because we have the attractive force okay due to the cohesive forces here that attract that pull the surface here toward the center okay so it in uh, one direction okay so try to push the force uh, in one direction that is why the droplet becomes a spherical okay Okay, normally the surface tension can be measured uh, by the unit of force per unit length, okay? So when when uh, the question asks, uh, calculate the surface tension, so you need to give, uh, once you get the value, you need to give the value, uh, the unit in terms of Newton meter. Okay, what is the Newton meter? Okay, let me explain. Basically, Newton is the force. Okay, okay. This is the uh, the road. But this inside here is the soap. Okay, it's a sabun soap. It will form the surface of the water or the surface of the soap. Okay. So when we try to uh, move uh, this one, this is the movable. Okay, movable. We try to pull this one to the right with certain amount of forces. Okay. And then the dx will move as well. Okay. So dx is the change of length here. Okay, what do you think when we try to move further the value of f? What happened to the surface of the soap? Surface okay. Tapi, okay. We can move this one until the surface of the soap here break. We nampak tak? Until the, okay, until the surface of the soap break, break uh, until it won't it won't appear it won't appear the surface, it will break. Okay. So once it breaks. That is what we call the, uh, the the limit of the the what we call it the wow. limit of the surface tension, the strength of the surface tension for the soap. Okay, until what extent that we can pull the force until the surface of the soap break. If the soap won't break, we can pull pull a longer until the value of the x uh, increase okay until the value until this one okay the surface of the soap break and then uh, we can measure the the force and the length here that is the the strength of the surface tension okay Okay, this is the phenomena of surface tension. Liquid rises in a glass, in a glass capillary tube due to the surface tension. Okay, liquid make a contact angle beta with the glass tube. 
Okay, basically, uh, all right, yeah. Okay. This is the phenomena of the surface tension. Okay. We have the height and then we have the angle beta. This is the angle of, of the surface tension you can see here. And this is the diameter. All right. So we have the method to measure the height of the capillary rise. Basically, this is the formula. Lah. The height equal to 4, 6, uh, sigma, cos beta over gamma d. Okay. Normally, the question uh, will give you the angle beta. And then, uh, the value of uh, diameter of this uh, tube. And then, this, uh, this gamma, which is rho g. What do you think of surface tension? How to get the surface tension? Anyone? Uh, yeah. How to get the surface tension? Uh, how to get the surface tension? Okay. Basic okay, basically, in order to get the surface tension, it, you can refer to the appendix section, uh, table B1, uh, reference textbook, uh, textbook portal. I believe I sent to you the textbook. Okay. Okay, this one. This one. Okay, this one. Mechanic of weight quarter. You look at the appendix section. You will notice that we have the surface tension. Can you see here? Yes. 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 Okay. Basically, this is the uh, uh, English unit. Okay, you need to find. Okay, this is the English unit. This is SI unit. Okay, different different kind of liquid will have different surface tension, for example, water, uh, alcohol, okay? So you need to refer to the table. Table of what? Table, uh, table B5. Okay, just put the value. I think this is the straightforward questions, okay? Uh, okay. The the properties table, the fluid properties table will be given in the in the test. Uh, I mean, I yeah. mean, in, in in this form. I mean, not specifically the value, but like this. Like this one. Like this in the screen. Uh, the the zero yeah. five ten fifteen yes. twenty something like this. Yes, definitely will be given to you. Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay, the last part, uh, we go to the uh, vapor. I want you to understand what is the vapor pressure. Because later on, in the next uh, week, we're going to learn more detail of the pressurized vapor, vapor, vapor pressure. So, what is a vapor? What do you know about vapor? Contain both gas and air. Okay. Okay, in the in the simple form, okay, for example, this is the tank, okay, this is the tank, uh, half water, okay, and this is the vacuum, consider initially it is a vacuum, what happened after a long time, the process, what happened, the process is going to be? Condense or, or vaporize? Okay. Vaporization. Okay, vaporization will take place. Okay, why? Because, because, because the molecule possess uh, some amount of energy, then it will rotate, vibrate, and evaporate to the air. Okay? 
So this water molecule will evaporate. Okay, will evaporate. The surface only lah evaporate. Okay, and then will fill up the tank. Okay. So this one we call as the vapor. Okay, because of the evaporation. This vapor after that give give a um, give pressure to the surface of the water. This one will give the pressure to the surface of the water. Okay, now you you understand what is the vapor pressure? The the molecule vaporize at the end of uh, at the end of the process it will exert the pressure to the surface of the water. That is why we call it as a vapor pressure. The pressure coming from the vapor. Okay. You guys, are you there? Yes, yes. Yes, yes doctor. Yes, yes. What happened when this uh, vapor pressure give uh, the pressure to the surface of the water? Do you think the water will, will, uh, will vaporize? When this is saturated, for example, saturated, saturated water, uh, saturated vapor, water vapor, do you think this will vaporize? The molecule will vaporize again? Uh, no. Okay, why no? Because the pressure exerted by the vapor um, tak bagi water tu untuk Yes, correct. So this is the water molecule. Try to evaporate, try to escape from the surface. However, due to the vapor pressure, push. Masuk balik. So the vapor, the 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 water molecule will not be able to vaporize because of the vapor pressure pushing back. So that is why this is happen when the vapor is saturated, dah uh, fully occupied. Okay, now you understand yeah, what is a vapor pressure. Boleh tak everyone? Everyone, can you understand what is a vapor pressure? Yes, doctor. Okay, what happen when you boil the liquid water? So more wa more vapor will come, right? More vapor will uh appear uh inside the tank so what do you think of the vapor pressure increase or decrease when you boil when you boil the liquid when you try to heat up the liquid ah uh, uh it uh, decreases okay. so when you Heat up the, the liquid. The water will as well, the water molecule will, will escape more. Uh -huh. What do you think of the pressure? Is it higher or lower? Higher. Higher. Yeah. Increase. Yes. Higher. Higher. Increase. Increase. Okay. It decreases. Increase. So now you understand. The more. Uh, the higher the temperature, the higher the, the vapor pressure exerted on the surface of the water. Okay, so finally this is the cavitation. Okay, it's the bubble form when the liquid, uh, form in a liquid when the local pressure falls below the vapor pressure. Okay, later on uh, the next uh, session, we're going to talk more on this cavitation. Okay, cavitation is the process of uh, explosion basically the bubble will explode okay due to the local pressure uh, fall below the vapor pressure okay the huh? cannot hear you oh I, I thought i was left yeah i heard from my internet again <laughs> Hello. Everyone, are you there? 
Uh, you are liking Dr. Just now. Yes, Dr. Okay. Okay, uh, cavitation is a very damaging as this bubble will collapse. This is not the collapse, it will explode, will damage the, uh, the structure. Later on, we're going to look at this later on, yeah? I think it's already two hours, you must be very tired. Same to me as well, very, very tired. <laughs> Okay, I hope that uh, you get something from this class. If you not really sure, please revise on your uh, on the subject that you not really sure. So I will upload this uh, recording to the e-learning. Please uh, view that and study. Uh, my advice: please look at that. What is the absence to zero after this? Okay. Later on, you will appreciate what is the Kelvin. Absolute pleasure, okay? All right, Doctor. Okay, I think uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, maybe tomorrow I will have uh, one quiz for you uh, during the tutorial. Please be prepared, yeah? Huh? Apa, Doctor? Tomorrow, uh, I plan to conduct a quiz. Okay. Quiz, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, I give you uh, a quiz, very simple quiz. Okay, okay please, uh, please study what we have learned so far, the fleet property, and then uh, the quiz is online. Okay, please open your webcam. Lah. Doctor, okay. uh, aren't we left with one topic from the fleet properties? Yeah, only fleet properties. No, we are left with one topic from fluid properties, the size something. Okay, let me check. Which one? No, I mean the uh, we did after the the last part of the chapter we didn't cover it. You said we'll cover it later. Uh oh, okay, that one, the one I shared to you, that is that is not part of your syllabus. Oh all right. Conservation of mass, that is not part of the syllabus week one. Okay, uh, please focus on this one only until this chapter fit properly. Uh, the one I, I, I understand what you what you meant because uh, the conservation of mass, the more than any, that is not part of the syllabus week one. So you need to focus to the fit property only. Okay, everyone. Okay, uh, I, end, uh, I think that's all for today. I hope that you get some. Doctor. Doctor. Uh, yeah. Doctor, can you please share the can slides? Please in the... Us the QR. Uh, pardon? Can you, can you repeat that? Can you QR share code. the slide? Okay, I will share the QR code. Uh, and Doctor, can you share, uh, can you please share uh, the slides in WhatsApp group? Okay, sure. I will share you the latest slide. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, please uh, remember tomorrow I, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to conduct uh, one piece now for you. Okay, uh, I think that's all. Uh, thank you very much. I end my session with Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.